Good morning, good morning, and welcome to my channel. I am Deb Morris, your spirit poet, and thank you for coming this morning. If it is your first time, well, bless your heart, and I hope you return again and again because here on this channel, we are talking about the things of God. We are seeking to reach out, you know, and, 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 and grab a hold of the things of God, the things He's promised for this time and this season. We are seeking, you know, to not, to not relent, not relent. That's a good word. Not relent until we see the things of God come to pass. The things that he has promised, the things that he has spoken in times past, the things that the prophets looked at and saw and believed in and were willing to die for, the things that the angels have looked into, but they're not able to partake in. Oh my God, aren't you amazing? Aren't you excited? Aren't you excited at this just amazing, um, um, uh, circumstance, the, 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 the things that God has put together in this time and season. I am amazed. I, 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 am, I, I get up every day with a heart of expectancy, with this air of expectancy, just, 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 just knowing, you know, that God is doing such an amazing work in me in me and if he's doing that work in me then he's doing that work in others and he's doing this work because this is the time this is the time and season it is a time to favor zion it is the time to favor zion god is waking up his people he is waking us up from our slumber he's waking us up he's jerking us out of our, our little our little comfort zones and he's saying come my people come he's raising up that army he's raising up that army that army like david remember david's army that's what he's raising up he's raising up an army of men and women who would leap over walls man who would not be focused on the the little things the things that are happening but they would be focused on the things of God hallelujah hallelujah he's raising up a, 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 a an army of men who would enforce heavenly possibilities in this earth and we know this because the scriptures tell us that the earth is waiting, creation is waiting, it's groaning, it's groaning, amen? And the reason why creation is groaning is because it's waiting for us to manifest, to manifest the divine presence, the divine nature of God. How do I know this? Because the scripture tells us in 1 Peter that we are partakers of that divine nature. We are partakers of that divine nature. And we've seen small smidgets of it. We've seen it, yeah? We've seen, we've seen men and women rise up. We've seen the Catherine Coolmans, the Elder Lucys. We've seen the Annie McPhersons. We've seen the Wigglesworth. We've seen all of that. And we've seen the generals of old man, the Moses and the, the Abraham and the Pauls and the, the, the Stevens and the Phillips and the Johns. We've seen them. And listen, the Lord has told us that the latter rain and the former rain together can you imagine that I read the scriptures with awe and wonder <laughs> I don't know about you but I read those scriptures with reverence and awe and my, sometimes I'm reading it and you might think oh she's reading a new book uh -uh. I'm reading the Bible I'm reading the stories that I've heard since I was a child and I'm in awe and my eyes are open and my heart literally starts beating because I understand it just grabs a hold of me and I know I know that on the inside of me is something that God has placed amen that that that, that just identifies with the things that 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 these men were able to do through their relationship with the God of heaven and I know that in me and, 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 you know, I was looking at it the other day and do you know, the scripture says, what scripture is it? It's in Psalm where the scripture says, the angels are asking, what is man? What is man? Not who is man? Oh, did we even look at that? Not who is man? What is man that you are mindful of him? That you would visit him? What is man? And then the scriptures tell us there is a spirit in man. There is a spirit in us. 
There's a spirit in you, there's a spirit in me, that longing, that gnawing, that, that restlessness that keeps you going, that probably keeps you um, 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 seeking and asking, crying out to the Lord, probably even subconsciously. You know, you're, 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 you, you want more, you want more, but you're not able to put your finger in it. That's it, that's that thing, that's that thing that God has placed in you. That's that, 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 that's, that's his, the, 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 the nature that he wants you to tap into, that he wants you to partake of. That's it. That's it. That's it. The spirit of the Lord rising up on the inside of you. I remember the scripture in Ezekiel, one of my favorites, right? And the scripture talks about Ezekiel not being happy. I guess he was upset about the whole thing being taken captive and, you know, all of that, all of that, and all that he was seeing and all of that. So the, the scriptures literally tell you that Ezekiel was, I think the scriptures say, it doesn't say that he was angry, it doesn't use those words, but he was not happy about the whole situation. But this, that same scripture says, and the Holy Spirit entered into Ezekiel and took him up. The Spirit entered him and took him up. Hmm. I'm going to find that scripture. I don't remember where it is. It's in Ezekiel. I'm going to find it. I'm going to post it. Right? But that's what the scriptures say. That's what the scriptures say. So it doesn't matter where you find yourself. Remember, Ezekiel was a captive taken into a strange land with the rest of his people as judgment from the Lord for them serving other gods and turning their backs on him. Right? But Ezekiel was a prophet. Ezekiel was a prophet in training. They say, I believe he was a priest in training. Right. And so um, in my heart, Ezekiel must have been saying, why would I have to go through the same thing that these people did? You know, but I didn't do nothing. So he probably was a little, you know, sometimes we're a little like God. I, I don't understand why you would allow this in my life. God, what is this situation? I've served you and I've tried to please you and I've done all I can to submit to you. And yet here I am in this situation. And sometimes we get to the point where we get upset with God. I don't know about you. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there, man, where I've just gotten really upset with God. And I don't know how many of you have deigned to quarrel with God, but yeah, me, I have. Yeah, but the Lord has always, you know, well, this, well, let's not go there. But anyway, Dan to be upset with God, right? But he was still so submitted to God that the spirit was able to come into him, come into him and take him up. Oh God, that we might be so yielded and submitted to you that you would be literally able to move us into the position and the places that you want us in this time and season. That we would not consider our own preferences and we would not consider our own way, Lord God, but that our ways would be completely, completely submerged in yours. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. What are we, God? What have you placed in us that you would watch over us? What word have you placed in us that you are watching over us to bring to pass this word, to bring to pass this thing? Even in your times, Lord, when you said, I am tired of them, I'm going to destroy them. Even in that time when you sought to destroy humanity, you saved a few, Lord God, watching over them, Lord God, to bring to pass. What is it that you have? placed inside of us open our eyes god that we may see remove the scales from our eyes remove the things lord god of israel that would keep us bound and locked down father god of israel not able to see not able to see not able to hear not able to hear. Give us ears to hear, God. Give us ears to hear. Yes, Father, you gave Samuel ears to hear you calling him. Samuel was but a boy, but you gave him ears to hear. At the same time, Lord God, your own servant, your manservant, the prophet given to Israel, Eli, the scripture says his eyes, his eyes were dim. 
Lord God, if there are any among us who are unable to see and unable to hear due to our dim eyes, Lord God, and closed ears, remove that, Lord. Remove it, Father. Remove it, God. By your spirit, you said, aren't those ministering spirits sent forth to minister on our behalf? Send your ministering spirits, Lord God of Israel, to remove scales from our eyes, to remove the fingers from our ears. To give us that new heart that you spoke about, Father. The new heart that you spoke about in Hebrews where you said, Lord God of Israel, that we will not need man to teach us. But that by your spirit we would be taught. Hmm. A. God, give us understanding. Give us understanding. Let your will be done, Father. Let your will be done, Father. Let your will be done, Father. You know, we spoke yesterday about men are always to pray. Men are always to pray. And you know, a lot of times we say, we don't know. We don't know what's happening. We don't know what God's doing. And God wants to tell us. There's nothing God wants more than to impart to us what he's doing. Remember yesterday we spoke about it. We said, he said to, um, he said to himself, he said to himself, <laughs> he said to himself, shall I really do this and not tell my servant Moses, my servant Abraham? Every time he was about to destroy the people of Israel, what did he do? He spoke to Moses. He said, these are a, 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 a stubborn people. Stiff naked people, I'm gonna destroy them. And 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 Moses was able to jump right in there and say, No, God, do not destroy them, do not destroy them, Father, and pray and intercede. And Jesus has taken that place. Jesus has taken that place where everything that the Lord is about to do concerning his people, he says it, and Jesus is able to intercede. And then he's given us the Holy Spirit who is in that, 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 that government, who is able to liaison with us and say, this is what the Father is going to do. And all we have to do is listen. All we have to do is have that heart to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit telling us what the Lord is telling us to do. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. Let's not miss out. Let us not miss out on this season. Let us not miss out on this season. Let us get into prayer. Let us jump into action in the realms of the spirit. Let us by all means not faint, but press on in prayer. In the name of Jesus. I am Deb Morris, your spirit poet. God bless you. God bless you. Have an amazing, amazing day.